Perfect. Mike Anthony with Goodson Gallery, and today I'm here with Daniel Santos, the San Antonio artist, and we're going to talk about his art and just art in general. So tell me, when did you first start painting? So I started painting uh, as a young child. Uh, obviously that's kind of a, a bit of a cliche, but <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you start painting and you start doing different things, uh, you start doing poetry, and you just start finding your niche. And then I moved into music, and music uh, was kind of what I followed my passion uh, down that road. Uh, but painting and doing things that became kind of a an avenue and a channel that I would just flock to and, and really go to just a, as a pastime, as a, as a way to kind of just let things go and, and, and work through things that I was thinking about. So about, I'd say maybe 10 years ago, I really started kind of taking it on and really wanting to learn the 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 basic fundamentals of painting, whether it's acrylic or oil, you know, all those uh, rules and and just understanding, getting a grasp and, 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 and really diving in. Uh, that worked for a little bit and I started doing it and, and things have progressed and, and I've been able to give away some paintings to family and, and friends and things of that nature. Uh, but over the last year, uh, I wanted to take it up to another level and so I first started uh, with wanting to paint on fabrics okay. and uh, wanting to make my own kind of uh, clothing and thing of that things of that nature and so that's really where the whole Daniel Santos gallery kind of came from it was it, it was a play on uh, my name my mom's uh, maiden name and then the whole gallery department kind of movement that's been happening over the last year two years right and so uh, moving towards that I, I realized that to really create that you wanted a body of work in art um, to kind of parlay with what you're kind of doing in fashion. And so doing both at one time really wasn't uh, the, the way to go. And so I moved towards just focusing on my body of work as an artist and what I could create with that. And uh, it led me down a long road. Um, I've been a huge uh, fan of uh, Wassily Kandinsky or Vasily Kandinsky's work uh, since I was much younger than when I started painting. Um, but after some time, his work, his abstract work can, you know, can get a little, uh, how do I say this, um, daunting. It's a lot to take in and it's uh, sometimes, uh, it, it's just so much that's there. It's so methodical and you just know that you can never become that sort of uh, painter. There's only one Kandinsky, there's only one Pollock. There's, there's only, only one, one everyone. There's only know? one everyone. Uh, and so, when I flocked towards uh, the, my current style, uh, I kind of found my niche, and uh, that's been... Uh, How long do you think it took you to find your style? Oh, years, wow. um, decades. Uh, it, it didn't come overnight. Uh, I, I, I used to like painting um, landscapes and, and things of that nature, uh, sunsets, uh, cityscapes. I, I enjoyed well, painting those. You a lot of different styles then. Yeah, and wow. so um, I used to like painting people uh, as well as the, the human figure, the woman's body, kind of a muse type of play. I did that for a little bit. And, and you know, while I enjoy it and it's fun and, and, and it meets a certain uh, want or desire, it doesn't fill the need. And it's like, what is that need of what I'm trying to express? And that's where my current art has taken me to, where I'm really wow. fully expressing uh, a number of things. And uh, that's, if Rothko was hearing that, he'd be like, that's not why I, I painted, but I'm not Rothko. So uh, <laughs> exactly, there's that. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate his work, and, and that's really where my style um, uh, was inspired by, that, that lack or that absence of figurative yeah. and, and things being there that you recognize, that not being there. Um, is what really drew me into it uh, because it, it takes a little more contemplation. It takes you being a part of the painting and in the experience and in the moment as opposed to just saying, oh, that's a coffee cup or that's a rose or it's a woman in a dress or it's a landscape. And so, um, oh, really, you're talking about that you actually took some time to learn like the methods of painting with different paints. How important do you think that is as an artist to take the time to learn those things rather than just sit down and start painting what you feel? So uh, it's both are important, right? So you want to learn and understand the different aspects of painting, whether you're, you know, you're going into acrylics, collage, oils, uh, and, and so many other mediums that artists use today. And there are fine-tuned rules to make that work the way it's designed to work. Right. With that said, as an artist, 
You shouldn't be tied to rules. You yeah. shouldn't be tied to the way that things work. So you should be willing to uh, experiment and uh, go outside of the boundaries. And what some may say, you know, I, I always hear for the longest time, you know, fat over lean, fat over lean, fat over lean. That's such a huge rule. And and I, I get the, the the psyche behind it and, and the, the, lo the logic and, and the reasoning behind it. But over time, you start asking yourself, you know, what if I did it the other way? What if it was lean over fat? And what would happen? What exactly and you start, does fat over lean mean? Uh, so fat over lean is using a fatter layer of oils. as So you put your thinner layers down, and you're going to put your fatter layers mm. on top so that when the painting cures and oils pa uh, paintings cure, they don't dry. Right. And so as the painting cures, it's able to uh, uh, dry evenly and consistently. And it, and it takes time for that to really finish curing. Uh, some... It, Full oil paintings can take sometimes six months, a year, depending on how thick that oil uh, wow. was used or that impasto, especially if it was done like a la prima or wet on wet, plein air. Um, those sort of paintings can take a little bit longer. There's also a lot of mediums that you can use like Galkid and, and um, Gamsol and, and things of that nature to, to make it you know dry faster and, and all right, that good stuff. But overall, it takes time. You know, and, and that time frame, you have, you have to learn that, well, what's going to play well with this and what's not going to play well? And, and if you thin it out too much and the painting's not really have any more binder in it, then, you know, you'll just put your finger on it. It'll be like dust <laughs> and it comes right off. So, oh, that's not good. It, yeah, and that's <laughs> not good either. So it, it's, it's knowing what you're trying to do. And um, a, a huge shout out to, to somebody uh, that really helped me, uh, yeah. Philip from uh, At Daily Rothko. Uh, I'm sure that you, you may have heard of him or not. Um, but he puts a lot of Rothko, Rothko pictures out every day. And um, I've actually been able to talk to him behind the scenes, not behind the scenes, but in his DM, uh, better said. And, uh, and he's been giving me pointers on the years and hundreds of thousands of pictures that he's looked at and the yeah. hundreds of thousands of people that he's, you know, talked to and, and, and whatever he's been able to glean and he's been able to share to me. And, and I've taken that and whatever, uh, you know, research I've done that has helped me as well and so it's a culmination of everything um, uh, a lot like before we started talking uh, uh, kind of like your ring it, it, it's yeah. a culmination of things like uh, you never anticipate that something will get to a certain point and then it does and you're like okay we're here and it happened and it's working and, and that's and that's what you want to go with but to get to that point uh, there's no fine tune definitely road. all these paintings that you created they're going to be here for I'm hoping so. Maybe I'm hoping so. Thousands of years, just getting passed through different hands and different walls, and just decorating houses. Yeah. You know, a lot of people in today's time, you can walk into a lot of houses, you don't even see art on the wall. Yes. You know, you see maybe some TJ Maxx decor on the wall, maybe one <laughs> or two pieces, but there's not enough original art on people's walls. Like, how do we fix this? I, I think a lot of it has to do with. Uh, pricing, uh, and I ha I hate to to put that cat out of the bag but I think that's a yeah. huge elephant in the room um, yeah it definitely uh, is uh, a lot of artists want to charge hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for paintings and um, I know for me uh, I'm a new artist uh, I, I have very few works that I have sold um, but in the ones that that I um, have done and that I'm proud of that that others enjoy uh, and that they put on their walls and they share I mean Price means nothing, you know, to, to me, selling it is not a thing. To me, it's far more the connection. Um, a lot of times I use uh, the phrase, uh, being an artist is, is taking a risk and making a connection with others. Yeah. Um, and, and that comes from Luther Mallory. And uh, it, it, that's the point of painting, is that you're wanting to make a connection with others. So the, I think there's the pricing and then there's the lack of connection. And yeah. sometimes those intertwine. Uh, you're just creating art to sell it, and that's fine. And then you have to make a living. I get yeah, it, you know. Uh, especially if you want to be a full-time artist, and that's what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I mean, somebody's got to buy it. Somebody's got to pay exactly. you. So pricing is, I think, one of the most confusing things for a lot of artists. Yeah. I mean, they don't know how to value their own art. You know, you think about it, you put so much time into it. It's, it is a one-of-one of one piece. It's original. Yeah. So you know, it should have value. It deserves that value. It really does. Yeah. But at the same time, you do want it to be bought and you want people to be able to enjoy it. So it runs a fine line. A and so sometimes the value over the connection, right? So, yeah. uh, well, 
you know, uh, some artists would not sell a painting because it wasn't the right person. And that's yeah. always a, a thing too, yeah, that right? Uh, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I get it. You know, you don't want to sell a painting to because it's not the right reason. Um, and well, that's make sure that owner is going to really appreciate it. Exactly. <laughs> you're like, I put and, all and my so life into that. Then you're, you're holding out yeah. for the right person. And so it takes a little bit of faith, too. And so there's that. Um, yeah, because who is the right person, you know? Because you're, you could say that for anyone, you know? Yeah. Whoever wants to buy your painting, like, they have a reason. They them. may be yeah. the right person, they right? The, the argument could uh, you know, very well be made that they are the right person. Definitely. Yeah. Now, when people look at your art, what, what, would you, what, what kind of style would you call that? What exactly? Is there a name? Um, so some people call it uh, color field painting. Uh, others call it, uh, some have deemed it abstract expressionism. Um, uh, I don't like either one. Um, what would you call it? Yeah. Uh, I would call it emotions and color, emotions and that's and color. yeah, and, and that's really um, for me what it is. And you you could call that abstract expressionism. That's yeah. kind of what that's defining. Um, but. When you say abstract expressionism, it just brings a whole cognitation of things. Yeah, abstract uh, is a very broad term. You know? Yes, yes. And so uh, some of my paintings um, have a certain uh, message or uh, point behind them. Uh, others are a small moment in time that is being grasped uh, or captured and and it's kept there forever and that's mm -hmm. really what I'm going for um, some of those that I, I put a meaning behind um, it, it's far more than just something that uh, myself right it's not my meaning it's, yeah. it's something that I want it to be absolute um, and I may walk into a world of hurt here but um, today we we kind of question well what is absolute and, and what is you know finite and, and or infinite and, and the true. two and so there's this there's this push back and forth and so to me there has to be a foundation it's like where do you start and so uh, that one over there on the wall that's what that's what that one was about it's um it's the the thrones of heaven and it's, so it's the lower throne the middle the throne. one in the middle uh no the the red blue uh green and blue yeah and so it's the the red is the the lower throne, the, the Christ throne, and the middle one's the green throne. Um, it's kind of like the spiritual earthly throne. And then the blue one is, is has like a fire thing behind it, and it's um, signifying the ultimate throne, the upper throne, the, the upper echelon where nobody else can go. And so, it, so you wouldn't pick that up just by looking at it. You would just say, hey, it's blue, green, and red, and that's really kind of cool. But that's that's there's a whole lot more behind that. And so that's what I always... Um, that's why I call it Thrones. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's the only painting I think that I have a name on. The others, um, I keep them called Untitled. Really? Yeah. And so I just use the colors as um, the names. And so on this one, it's uh, red, brown, blue, and black. And the, you don't see any brown, blue, but if you look at the border closely, it's not black. It's brown and blue mixed in together, which does oh, make a black. Very cool. And so, uh, so, yeah, it's just those little things that... Um, that I've really come to enjoy about painting in this style and, and doing this sort of art. Um, this one here, uh, this was a kind of a, a bright period in my life where I was kind of just going through a transition and just changing from things and and stopping old things and starting new things. And um, that's kind of what I captured here. And, and it's it's just that. And so you, you have blue kind of a foundation um, and, and some pink and, and just orange, kind of the, the excitement of things and and the fire kind of around it in the back, the kind of just that burning desire. And so if I didn't tell you that, that may not be what you captured, but right. that's the intent behind it. And so lots of times for artists, it's do you want to explain what you're trying to paint or do you want to leave the person to um, find their own meaning and their own, you know, uh, what's the purpose of what does this say to me? And so... I like to explain it because I think people yeah. want to know, and I like. To I like knowing. Yeah, I like and, I, and I think some people uh, enjoy knowing. Uh, others, they want like myself. When I see like a painting or something, I don't want anybody to tell me the meaning. Uh, I want to kind of dissect it, study it, understand it, and then if I don't really fully comprehend it, okay, tell me what you meant. See yeah. how close or how far I am um, from what you intended, 
And uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. And so, uh, it just kind of sets a, a barometer as to where you're at and kind of understanding the artist and, and what they were trying to convey. Exactly. Now talk, talk about that. Let's talk about that one again. That one's really cool. Now the size of this of the the three brains you talk about. Is there any meaning behind the size that you used in that? Mm-hmm. So uh, the 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 red one is if you look at it, it's very symmetrical. It's very um, towards the ground. Uh, and, and if if I could, I'll take it up. Real yeah, far. bring it over here, and I'll bring it over. I won't miss anything else. But on this one, um, and so on this one, this is the one the only pieces you've titled, right? Yeah, Thrones. Oh. And so uh, on this one, there's a redness. If you look closely, there's like a red square inside of it. Yeah, I that's see that's in it. And so it's kind of the rock, right? The foundation, that cornerstone, uh, an allusion to my beliefs, Jesus, and 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 all of that. Um, and this is Earth, um, and that's why it has kind of like a pinkish and an orange and a yellow and and things coming out of it. Sunsets, beaches, and humanity and life and just everything that comes with that but it's also spiritual because mm -hmm. um life is spiritual in, in every form way or fashion and life's also natural it's and, and it's also natural yeah. and so um i think that's captured best at in birth when you see a child born i've seen my children born i have seven and so um each one seeing each one be born it's just it's a miracle within itself right the miracle of life and you know how it comes about you understand the process but yeah everyone is a miracle you're like wow this is a life and so it's alive, it, it's alive <laughs> and it's and it, it came from us and it's, yeah. it's there and it's just it's just that and that's that's capturing that but that's far smaller if you see that it's far smaller than yeah i noticed either, that was the smallest one either one yeah. and and there's a point behind that because um a, this is far greater. We need this, and this should be our foundation. And B, this is uh, where we're all going. Um, um, some may this go. This is the largest piece. Yeah, uh, exactly. So you have you have to think of times past and and of times future, and then times present, and uh, everything will culminate here. Uh, time is here, uh, but there's an absence of time here, and so again, there's there's that being spoken of into it. Um, hence why there's kind of a, a transparency where you can kind of see some of the orange and it's kind of uh, spotted because there's there's kind of a, this this shining through where yeah, uh, it, it's not just what you can see, it's also what you don't see and what's behind it. And that's where that pink uh, line kind of a play on the people oh, here. Also, it's like a mix of both other realms too. Correct. Yeah. And so it's, it's everything kind of, it, it all comes to this point. And um, so yeah, that was, it took me a while to really want to represent how I wanted to represent this and, and just the, um, the elements within it. And then more importantly, it's layer upon layer upon layer. How many layers is this painting right here? Oh you man, I, I, it just depends. So this one was probably more layers just because of what I was going for, for that effect of that in the background being yeah, darker exactly. and then wanting to put money on top. Um, and I, I want to say it's about 11 or 12 per each one. Well, that's a good amount of layers. Yeah, and so it's different colors and each one. And then so you're trying to make sure that you come up to this top color that you're trying to represent. And there, as I look at it now, it's like, I wish it was brighter blue. And you start, you know, <laughs> as, a, as, a, as an artist, uh, yeah. you're like, it should have been brighter and, and did these little things. but. It, uh, this is the way when when I finished it I was proud of it and I was yeah. happy with it and it's just now in hindsight and retrospect that you're like oh this and that and uh, but that's a, a catch-22 you'll it never is. you'll never you'll, you'll never, never finish perfect, anything yeah. and uh, you, could, you could be in the first painting ever of your whole life if, you know really yeah. easily <laughs> yeah and so uh, that that was that was that was this one uh, Thrones and, and I really enjoyed this piece uh, it, I started with a really kind of if you look at the background it's kind of lighter on the bottom it and it goes darker up top again that goes into the whole uh, the ocean the sky and then uh, that unknown firmament realm um, space uh, however you want to perceive that um, there's different people that have different points of view so there are. 
yeah infinite point of views right yes there. yeah so that's that's that piece I mean, art has changed so much over all the centuries of time. Where do you think art's going to be going onward from here? I see a lot of, uh, of the current art movement and pop art, modern art, and things of that nature um, kind of headed back in a sense, it, in the same way that fashion does, right? right it kind of repeats recycling, itself. Yeah. It's a continuous recycling. and uh, You kind of start seeing that today. Um, you have uh, a lot of these artists that are trying to do the uh, kind of the Warhol thing, right? Mm -hmm. But not be Warhol. They're not Warhol. Yeah. Uh, and then you have some others that are trying to do the de Kooning abstract type of thing, but they're not de Kooning or Pollock, but they're not Pollock. Um, and then you have um, different artists that are doing like pouring mediums. And yeah, I've seen a lot of pouring recently. You're, you're taking uh, away, not taking away, but you're not incorporating better said the brush strokes or any of that nature it's kind of just yeah. whatever the paint wants to do you I know feel like I mean? the coolest part about it is immersing yourself into it and putting yeah. all your own energy into that brush and on the painting the pouring you know it's not not as much of yourself goes inside of it and, and it, it, you go into the paint right yeah, like exactly. a lot of you goes into how you set up that little um, whether it's a jar a bucket a cup whatever it is that they're using um, there's a gentleman online, his name is Colin Schaub, okay. uh, and uh, he does um, these really intricate designs, and he has like this spinning... Um, oh, I've seen this that. actually. Yeah. That and one is really unique. Yeah. yeah, he has the spinning canvases, and um, the whole thing spins, it, he'll drop the paint, and it'll spin around, and this is spinning, and so there's a lot of intricacy, like, you know, that to is. say that he's not in his art is like blasphemy, like, yeah, yeah, he's in it, he's you know in what I mean? But, I mean he, but it's not to the level of, is he putting a brush to the canvas? Like, yeah. if, if, if you're like, it's, it's like a purist, right? Like, I, I like to think of cars, right? Like, there's right. muscle cars, and then there's modern day cars. And if you're yeah. a purist, uh, uh, 67 <laughs> Shelby Mustang GT500, nobody's going to argue that's a beautiful car. No or, uh, or a Barracuda, or those are beautiful vehicles. But is a Tesla, well, maybe somebody may love it's it and enjoy it. It's beautiful in a way different way. In a di exactly. Way different way. It's not classic. It doesn't have that craftsmanship. That, and yeah, and there's that, too. And there's that, that longevity that comes with those vehicles, too, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek because you know that Shelby Mustangs are very high maintenance and things of that nature. But the, just the, the, the fact that you could even take one of those cars, you know, today, that's maybe been run down, sitting out there. They're so solid. They're made out of solid yeah. metal and everything. And, and you could just, you know, fix them up. Uh, I would like to see if we're going to be able to do that with modern day cars. I'm really today. excited to see if modern day cars become collectible in the yeah, future as that well. That too. Yeah. So, they're just so mass printed now, really. I mean, you have to go to the high ends, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, even and though still, though, I feel like even the high end vehicles back then are just so much more like unique than yes. today's high end vehicles. Yep. And, and so, like, today to get a car that is going to be, hold its value, you, you know, you got to get, like, a the new Corvettes, but you got to get, like, the really crazy one that's got, like, all this packaging and all yeah. this extra stuff that's going to be, like, one of 600 and everybody's going to want it. Or, like, the Demon Hellcat, whatever, from the Charger that, uh, from Dodge. Um, and, and those are collectibles and they actually increase in value as you own them. And so there are some modern day cars that, that do the same yeah, thing as those appear, old yeah. would, but they're not as, as, as many, uh, they're far, more few, far in between. And that's, uh, that's how I feel about art too, right? Like mm -hmm. it's the same way. Um, There's more artists now. There are more artists now to, than ever. But, more access to paint. But you go to a Christie's auction or a Sotheby's auction yeah. or anything, and it's Bansky and Warhol and 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 they're and so specific. Exactly, and, and it's they're just they're selling names or not even selling art. And so they'll have. I mean, I, I know that they have like their upcoming artist nights, like once a year, or things like that, and and they give chances to to, or to other artists, but it's not. It's not to the level that I guess the artist community would want. Um, and yeah, I agree. I mean, can you give to the community everything they want? No, of course uh, not. Of course not. But uh, everybody has to fend for themselves, try to make a name, and uh, 
Yeah, because it probably is really about making a name more than anything else because there is a whole sea of talent out there. And oh everyone yeah. has their own unique style. It's really about you and your yeah. own expression and pe people like that and can pick up on that. And, and being and yourself. You being know. yourself, yeah. I was actually watching uh, earlier this morning, Deion Sanders was being interviewed by somebody and the person interviewing him, I guess they changed uh, their voice um, prior to the interview. Like prior to the interview, they were talking one way and then after, once they started the interview, they were talking a different way. You're not like that. You're awesome. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, he, he, uh, he made it a point during, he's like, oh, hold on, stop. Like you got to be you, like be mm -hmm. yourself. Like if you're going to talk to me, talk to me as yourself. Like just a moment ago, two minutes ago, you were not talking like that. And so <laughs> it's like, I heard that I'm like, that is so true. Like how many artists today are not in their studio saying whatever they're saying, talking however they're talking, expressing themselves however they're expressing themselves, but then a gallery comes around or a potential buyer or whatever and you stop being you. Yeah, they think they have to act a certain way to make the pretend. sale. Yeah. And 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 it's that's where that. I go back to that whole thing when you asked me earlier, like what's you know, what's really holding kind of back some of the people buying or anything. Yeah. It's that connection, you know, like it is the connection, right? You, you have a price and you're you're so focused on putting a price and getting it sold that you lose sight of making that connection and that scares away the customers it's, and it's yeah. not it shouldn't even be about the money it, it should be about that. uh connecting and i think a lot of uh the old masters and things of that nature as they talk about they were on commission they were yeah. forced to do a lot of these things that's right? very it's true. not like that that's what they wanted there wasn't do. a lot of free will in art back then yeah. as yeah. compared to now that's why we see such a blend of so many styles and yeah Back then, it was really, you're right, was, uh, so much was commission based. And you had to. The Pope said, hey, paint this. Or, exactly. You know. Hey, you have to. The, the echelon yeah. of painting then was to make a Christ painting or yeah. uh, something spiritual or something angelic or, uh, or, or, or a king or a monarch. Or that was the. You made it. You know, you yeah. reached the upper echelon. You're a renowned artist. Um, Think of Da Vinci, Michelangelo, you know Raphael, and all of these different artists that that were commissioned to do different things, right? And, exactly. And they were famous because of that, and, and that helped them, uh, vice versa. Today, you don't really get that. People aren't no. commissioning artists to paint sixteen chapels. No. Um, <laughs> and that's just. <laughs> uh, I mean, you'll get commissions to do murals and yeah. things of that nature, uh, and, and I'm sure that there's artists out there that I maybe I've never even heard of that have been uh, commissioned for things to do great works. Um, I, I, as I'm saying it, I think of the artist in New York that I think covered some of the buildings in fabric. No, oh, really? Yeah, and um, he covered buildings in Central Park in fabric, and it was just a very elaborate presentation. I forget That's his cool. name. Uh, but he's done it for decades, for wow. years, and he's done it around the world. And so by the time he got to New York to be able to do this, I mean, he's done this since the 70s or 80s, and right finally on. he's doing this in New York. So there's that aspect, too. The artist, if you're if you're saying you're an artist, you know you're in this for the long haul. Yeah, it's a long-term game. It, 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 this is who you are. It's not something you're trying to become. Uh, and it's funny because a lot of it, I, I'm going to become an artist. Well, that's interesting because even the person that just makes one work of art is an artist, mm -hmm. in essence. And I agree. Almost and everyone's artist is. It's just the art is just creating what's in your head exactly. into a physical creation. You know. Yep. And I feel like being an artist and creating art, it like it's like a muscle workout to be able to create the life you want better. Exactly. Because you're practicing turning thoughts into reality. And as you say that thoughts into reality, that. Um, we s everything that we do starts with a thought. Yeah. Everything. Um, the greatest things that have been ever been made and, and, and accomplished and created and invented all started with a thought. Everything, yeah. And, and so if everything starts with a thought, that means that we're all the same because we all have the same capacity, capability, potential. Yeah, no one, can, no one can think things other people can't think. Everyone has the same ability to think. What they choose, and, and so it's just honing that, and <laughs> excuse me, and as you said, after you've honed that, being able to then execute and then create, yeah, and that creation is is where the artist comes out into being, and so like this is the color that I envision in my head, and then you put that color, you find right. it, you 
put the cars together. You, you make them, you know. Or you create it, or yeah, yeah. You it's such an amazing thing to do. I just can't wait to bring more. <coughs> art. I think there needs to be more art. I feel like we. Oh yeah. Even uh, though there's so many artists now today, more than ever, I feel like there's less art in houses still. <laughs> uh, you know, the, I, I've heard that. So I've heard a couple people come by and they're like, "You really have a lot of art up, and it's really cool." Like, I was like, "Well, the majority is mine. I made it myself." Like, really? And so there's that's kind of a, a conversation starter. Yeah, it is. And so that's kind of cool. Um, I didn't have one of the really big pieces that um, I usually have up front. It's actually sitting at uh, Modern Eclipse Gallery downtown. Oh, cool. And so, uh, shout out to Kay Mangano. And so, uh, she's uh, she actually gave me a, a really cool opportunity um, to, to do my first kind of uh, solo exhibition here in the city next month. And so, I'll be doing that and um, looking forward to, to kind of um, discussing uh, some of these pieces and other items that, that I'll have out there. and. Um, it's just getting things in order, right? And 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 sometimes you, it comes from the least suspected places. She was my wife's hairstylist oh, wow. for years, <laughs> and I hadn't seen her for the longest time. And then I ran into her downtown at an art show, and uh, one thing led to another. And then I ended up, uh, I, and you might have seen it. I was playing at at uh, First Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, so I play sax, and and I enjoy that, and and yeah, and so. One thing's led to another, led to another, and and, and um, there's that whole quantum earth uh, uh, kind of thing, how right. everything's kind of connected, the dots, and everything just goes, and um, you're either going to go with the flow or you're going to fight it, and uh, that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, right? No. But it's just going with it, and uh, and and going with what God has for you. So uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying my painting uh, style, uh, what I'm able to create on, you know. A regular basis as well because that's another thing um, I'm grateful for the inspiration because um, lots of times that's a hard that's a hard thing yeah uh, for artists they um, you can struggle you can like a writer with a writer's block yeah uh, creative block uh, and just um, just gotta go out there and live and experience things and yeah. that will therefore create ideas uh, I'm fortunate I've, I've I've been able to experience a lot uh, um, I, I have seven kids. I've been married for 20 years. Uh, I've traveled the world um, thanks to my previous job. And so, yeah, I've got to experience a whole lot. And uh, growing up, too, uh, my parents are missionaries. And so I lived oh, overseas. Wow. And so nice. um, it's just all of that. All of those things culminate together. And, and, and you're just like, okay, I got to get this out. I got to tell others. And then how can you do that? If, if I were to draw you a volcano in Nicaragua, you'd be like, well, that's a volcano in Nicaragua, <laughs> yeah. and that's cool, but if I draw, you know, a fiery explosion and, and something that kind of culminates what I saw when I walked up there to the mouth of that volcano, now I not only tell you about, hey, I lived in Nicaragua, but yeah. this is my experience. And this is what it feels like. To be with a volcano, and this is what it feels like. Yeah. And, and so there's that, and it's just... Again, back to the whole connection thing. It's it's wanting to make connection with others, and um, it's interesting because I I really have no need to make connection, right? Uh, I have seven children. I have a big family, and it's great. You know, it, hypothetically, you don't have a need to make connection, but I have a want, and and that want far exceeds that 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 need. And so it's uh, it's like, okay, how can I connect with others to where I can you know we can sit down like this and have conversation, and, right? And and discuss art and. And enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, art's amazing. <laughs> yeah, now to so all of, like the new artists out there that haven't like scared to sell their stuff, how would you recommend them to start selling their stuff? Just number one, um, stick with it. Uh, I think that's that's the the biggest thing. Uh, never give up. Uh, I, I like to go by what I heard um, uh, one of the admirals say to one of his Navy SEAL six teams. Um, before they went out on a mission, and it was, uh, they, they, I, he, they was just telling him a basketball story, and I'll make it really short. It was a basketball story, and they went out, and, and um, uh, they were from Indiana, and they would shoot hoops, and, and they measured the, the, the court. He told them, hey, measure the court from the free throw line to the hoop, and then measure the roof, and he's like, okay, when we get to the big place, what are the dimensions? Are they the same? Yes. <laughs> Nothing changes. The only thing that changes is the arena, the yeah. audience. And so as an artist, it's, 
it's sticking through it. You know, it's it doesn't matter if you're doing it for one person or you're doing it for a gallery or doing it for a show. It's it's knowing that you're doing it because this is what you're meant to do. And so uh, as to selling art, you know, daily consistency, you know, that's number one. Um, a, a lot of artists want to sell and, and, and be known or, or get their name out there or whatever the case may be, whatever you're called to do. Um, for me, it's just making a connection. Um, uh, it's not so much the selling part. Uh, but for those that do, it's a, it's consistency. You know, it's 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 a commitment to that consistency, and and saying, okay, I'm going to stick with this, whether it happens or not. You know, and I may have to do sacrifice and go through this and yeah. and give up that, but I'm going to stick at it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to go with it and, and and just stay with it. And um, it may not even be in your lifetime. Yeah, that's another thing. That's another thing. That's another thing. So um, and that's okay. Dude, I'm and that's okay. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. really cool as well. But if, if, if you're wanting to achieve, and I think that's, I, I guess, the drawback, right? Uh, I want to be an artist because I want to be in a museum or I want to be famous or I want people to know my name or I want to sell my art at an auction for millions of dollars or yeah. whatever that case may be. You know, that people have dreams and goals and there's nothing wrong with that. I like, agree. let's just be clear, there's nothing wrong with that. But in your heart of hearts, it has to be more substantial yeah, than that. It definitely is. Because that alone uh, is not going to equal that. The, re the reason all those people are in the museums and in the million dollar auction houses is because they were crazy for art. Exactly. You know? And it wasn't because that's what they wanted. Yeah. I think of Picasso. Picasso was brought up a painter. Yeah. Like, he went into the masters and, and, and his father was a painter. So he comes from a line of painters and, wow. and he learned how to paint and he knew how to paint. He learned how to paint fast, slow and do things for galleries and well, at the end, he started doing 15-minute paintings that would draw, you know, sell for $60,000. And wow. you're like, what? <laughs> well, how? Well, it's not the 15-minute painting for $60,000. Yeah. It's the entire life of him that led him to be able to do that. And Very true. I, I think we forget about that. It's, it's not, hey, how do I sell my art? It's why do you want to sell your art? Right. And and And... and I like what Simon Sinek says, um, start with why. Uh, if you've never heard of him, um, he's a great uh, speaker and, and helps uh, not only corporations and businesses and organizations, but uh, individuals as well, leaders. And uh, he says it, start with your why. You know, we always want to start with what. What do you want to yeah. do, right? Like, and then you worry about the how, and then you get to why. You know, start with why, yeah, sure. and then get to how, and then you'll get to the what when you start with why. And it's that's how Apple does their did their whole thing and, and right. created the everything and so um, it's 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 gleaming from all those things and taking lessons and applying them to yourselves and not just saying oh that was a really good speech or that was a good tech talk right and it's mm -hmm. cool no like really listen to what's being said because that person's on that stage because they actually applied those skills and they actually used them and they actually made it a way of life there's a lot and, of purpose behind it. And a lot of purpose. And so, uh, what's your purpose? You want to sell your art? Well, you got to know what your purpose is. Yeah, I think and there's so. a lot of purpose behind it. I mean, what are you wanting to convey to the person that owns that in their house? I mean, what kind of energy are you trying to give them? And, you know, it's, as we said earlier, do, do you want a longevity? Do you want it to be a, a museum piece? You know, this may be a work that you're working on for two years, three Definitely. years, because you're wanting a certain level. And so, it's not about I'm gonna sell this at a stroll or an art walk or whatever. No, it's hey, I am in this for the long haul because I want to see my painting one day in a museum. And definitely and not be scared to put your art out there everywhere. Exactly. You know, don't share it with you know as much people as possible. And and, and the process, sharing the process too. Yeah, I that's, think a that's huge another part. part. Uh, a lot of artists are kind of secretive about their process. Yeah. I know that Rothfield was very secretive really? about his process. That's so funny. <laughs> um, nobody really knows how he made his paintings. Um, that's why it's so interesting to have to kind of learn anything. Sometimes everything. the secretive can be really cool and kind of like a unique yeah. thing about you as an artist as well. But sharing it at the same time, it's also is like, that brings in a lot of people to yeah. relate with you and, uh, see, and they love seeing behind the scenes, you know? And, and so, I feel like you have to be either one extreme. You have to be super secretive yeah. or super open. In the middle is probably not going to work. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. Like, for me, I, I don't I don't go into how I make them. I just, you know, I let people know it's layers, it's this and that. Um, 
but the day to day, uh, I guess, yeah, I am a little more like Rothko as I talk about it with you. Um, yeah. Because uh, nobody really gets to, my kids, um, that's really the only people that get to see how I make them. Um, and my wife, uh, nobody else. Uh, because it's, it's a very long process. Yeah, 12 to 13 layers per piece. Yeah. That, that shows that and there's, that painting has so many layers to it. And it has to wait, and you gotta wait for certain layers to dry depending on the look that you're going for, whether you're going for a transparent look or an opaque look that you then want to convey some sort of shadow through the next subsequent layers that you're bringing through. Um, uh, and, and then what mediums you're gonna use. Uh, some may give a sheen, others a gloss, others a matte, and then what do you, there's a play, like on that one, there's a play on yeah. gloss and matte and, and, and that whole thing. And so yeah, it's, it, it takes time. And, and it's, if you're trying to do it in one day in one sitting, well then it's probably not your style. And yeah. find a style that's, that, that kind of goes with that. Um, I have some things that I've done uh, in one sitting. Um, and, and they're fun, but it, I, I wouldn't say that they, they come to the quality or the effect of capturing like yeah i agree and it's something else that takes time yeah well you, you can feel the time in the painting when you look yeah. at it you can see to see how many hours were behind there yeah like when we walked in that one over there at the front that one took uh, uh quite a few weeks um just getting through the different layers over and over and over and over and and then i was going for a certain kind of fiery middle as, as i was talking about yeah. earlier and it's just getting that to really show and you don't need layers there to do that. It's actually minimalistic to make that occur. And so while you're building up everything around, it's this area here mm. you have to preserve and protect. And so there's that too. And it's, it's understanding that and, and that, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've messed up. And if I told you that I've messed up one time, I'd be lying. I've messed up <laughs> hundreds of thousands of times. And so, but like Bob Ross said, happy accidents, right? They all have a, a, a purpose and, and a reason. And so, yeah. yeah, you just keep going yeah. until you find the right color. And, and, and until you re find the right color, the right shape, the right form, the right transparency, the right kind of look. Um, that one there was actually the first one, the very, very, very first one that I did. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, of that style. And that's why it's on paper. Um, and if you look at the paper, it's like a different size. I actually custom cut that paper because I didn't want it to be, a p I didn't want it to be perfect. Um, I wanted imperfection. And so that's the point of that. Um, that's that the thing too with art yeah. is it allowing imperfection in yeah. art. You know, 1600s, everything had to be absolutely perfect. Yep. The, sh the sh shadows, the, the face had to be like dynamic to the whole body. But Luminescence we, from within. Yeah, yeah it was, everything was about perfection. Now people are accepting that life's not perfect in art as well. Yeah. It's there is error, there is this n non linear stuff and everything. It's not perfect. It's, it's just real. It's, you know, it's real. And everybody goes through things, everybody has um, situations in their life and that they can draw from uh, that they can say, hey, well, yeah, this isn't perfect and that isn't perfect. I don't have that in order and this isn't in order and I can really fix that and I can be better here and and that's that's a lot of uh, what I try to also do um, in my paintings is, is convey that imperfection uh, because none of us are perfect mm -hmm. um, in any form way or fashion uh, I have one of the paintings in my room uh, that I have uh, it's actually slanted um, and so like on the wall when it's hung uh, yeah so when you when you see it it's straight yeah but the the actual structures within it are kind of the top ones are fine but then you see it kind of falling and so it gives like this you see everybody that looks at it just like like and that's <laughs> the point yeah because nothing is ever just straight on it, no. it, you always kind of have like an angle or a look or or very rare you just unless you're at a movie theater or something like that yeah. right but yeah. um in real life you know very rarely are you just dead on kind of looking at somebody in the eyes and just um, there's more to it. There's more I to like it. that. I'm going to have to see that one. Yeah, yeah I'll get cool. it. I'll yeah. Get it. So you can check it out. It, it's really cool. What time are we at? Oh, wow. That was a good one. So, if you see, at first, oh. you, it, it, see? Yeah, yeah. 
at first you won't kind of realize it, but as you start looking at it, you start seeing how it just starts falling on one side. I do. Yeah, and at first, but you don't see it at first. Yeah. Then you start seeing it as it goes down. Yeah, and so that's that was the point. It's you know we all have kind of a, a certain angle that we kind of uh, look at things, and again, this one's a lot of layers, a lot of different colors, um, a lot of in intricacies within it, and um, but yeah, you you see the transparency. Like the texture of things. too. Um, yeah, and so and, and so I I went with like. I like kind of that old kind of cracking kind of look sometimes and I like so that look too. and sometimes I'll incorporate it uh, other times I won't uh, just really depends how I feel but I feel it gives it like a rawness a trueness to, to the paint and to, and to the art and uh, without it, it just seems perfect and to me perfect is imperfect and whatever you can glean from that Definitely. <laughs> but yeah this was one that and it's different in color too. It, it was just like the colorations. Um, it's kind of like a brownish, kind of orangey, tan kind of background. It's just, it's different. It's different from what I was doing. And uh, so yeah, this is one too that I that I really enjoy. And so a lot of these I will have um, at that show that I'll be at. Yeah, when's that show? Uh, November fourth. November fourth. Yeah. So November fourth. November fourth in San Antonio. Yep. November fourth, San Antonio. Uh, Modern Eclipse downtown um, at the Blue Star Art Complex. Uh, it'll be first Friday, so uh, people will be out there. It'll be an awesome event, uh, a great time. Um, I'll be playing jazz. Oh, uh, saxophone? Be, yeah, oh, I'll be playing beautiful. some jazz. I'll be ha displaying my art. Um, there'll be also, uh, I believe, some uh, a photo show and uh, some ballet and some other things. And That's so, really quite the event. Yeah, wow. yeah, and so she, she has a really awesome spot and just I really love what she does uh, Kim uh, with with her expression of her art it's not just a painting and I could never do what she does like that's I don't I don't have that I'm not at that that that's not my creative world that's hers and so she comes from a background of just being able to really uh, put things together and um, and and just and it works and and you're like how did you come up with that and so for example last uh in that for last first friday it was just screens coming down and and different pictures on different screens but we oh, looked wow. there from far away it all worked perfectly and it was just really great it was kind of like a digital abstract collage type of thing and uh yeah it was really cool really cool That's super cool and and where can people find you online uh online you can find me at daniel underscore uh santos underscore gallery um or on Twitter as well, same thing, Daniel Santos Gallery. Or on Facebook, same thing, Daniel Santos Gallery. And uh, yeah, those are my three options. I, I should have a website coming soon. Oh yeah, cool. uh, DanielSantosGallery.com. I was Perfect. actually able to get the domain. Oh, I love that. Uh, that's that's <laughs> hard. That's hard. It so, is. It can be. Uh, and so I was able to get the domain, and so hopefully I'll have a, a website coming soon, so I'll be able to have that, and and hopefully uh, you know some other things will start coming up uh, in the near future, and. And, and I'm just um, I'm just grateful for all the opportunities and in, in, including this one uh, just to yeah. be able to sit down and talk that with somebody else like minded time, with yeah. art it's just awesome it's just awesome it is thank you so much no man. thank you Mike yeah. I appreciate it thank you so much thank you perfect that was an amazing conversation oh great that great that was you see art a lot in the same ways too yeah I, I enjoyed that. That was awesome. Hopefully, we inspire a bunch of artists out there. Let's the do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I hope so. Convince them to start sharing themselves and going out there. That's the goal, you know. Everything yeah. I'm doing, just to inspire more art. That's cool, man. I like yeah. what you're doing. 